in. I got here about 3.30, and um, God brought the same thought back to me and brought these verses, many verses of Scripture to me. And I began to dissect them and go through them. Saw something that I never saw before, naturally. And God said, I want you to tell my people. You know, that's, that's a good sign when God said, I want you to tell my people. Them that's watching by way of internet, them that's, you know, I, I, I pray that you get actively involved in a church that preaches truth. I pray that you, that, them that's out there, but God spoke to me and he said, tell my people. That's you. Amen. That's me. And he said, say these words to them. And this was probably about the easiest message that I've ever gotten. <laughs> and I got it out of the Hebrew, and that's amazing because it was about the easiest thought and the easiest dissecting. So looking around, I guess I'll... I'll preach to you, and I'll preach to you, I'll preach to them and that's watching, and I pray that um, you'll get something out of this. So if you have your Bibles, <coughs> I, I really don't know which exactly which verses of Scripture to begin with, but we'll start with the book of John, chapter number 7. Then if you can go over and find 2 Kings, chapter number 2, John chapter number 7, beginning with verse number 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me. Do we have any believers here today? Amen. How many believers we got? He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said. Notice it says that. Not as some of the great theologians have said. Not what some of the great commentaries have said. But what the scriptures or the word of God has said, he said, out of his belly shall flow rivers. Everybody say, flow rivers. Say, of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Amen. Now turn to the book of Second Kings. You can jot the next one down, Ezekiel chapter 37. I mean, sorry, 47, but I'm not going to, that's a, law, a big portion, so I'm not going to read that. But I will comment from it. Second Kings chapter number 2, beginning with verse number 19. And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth. 
but the water is not, and the ground barren. And he said, that is Elijah, bring me a new cruise and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters. And he cast the salt in there and said, Thus saith Jehovah, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. Father, I do praise you and I glorify you. God, you are a great God. Lord, I pray that you'll speak to your people. Speak to their minds, speak to their hearts. God, I pray that they'll hear the things that the Spirit has to say. And God, they'll realize what they need to do in these last days. God, you're trying to warn the people. You're trying to warn the nations. Not just the United States, but you're trying to warn the world that your coming is ever so nigh. I pray, God, to let it sink deep within our minds and within our heart. And I pray, Lord, that you'll touch us and cause us to not just be stirred, but to become changed. I pray and I ask it, Lord, your word is anointed. Anoint my mind with the flame and the power of your spirit. As I break the bread of life into your people. And I ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Turn around and shake a few hands. Praise God. <laughs> you know, that's an old thing that we've been doing for 48 years. Turn around and shake somebody's hand. And now to just go, hey, buddy, everybody, how you doing? <laughs> you on the Internet. Praise God. Good to see you. cracked me up when I was watching Mr. Trump. They were shaking hands, but this one guy, he was smart. He walked up there and he went, I ain't touching you even if you are the president. That's pretty good. <laughs> Wise man. Of course, a lot of the ones that are representatives and of the, a lot of them, they've they've been tested positive for for Mr. Chrono or whatever. Except Donald, he's been negative. He's been negative for a long time. But when I was viewing these, looking at these scriptures. I really didn't know what to call it, but the healing of the waters of Jericho in this brief passage introduces to us a series of miracles brought about by the prophet Elisha, the prophet, particularly Concerning the water, whether from rivers or springs, as the Bible so declares. But the city of Jericho is located north of the Dead Sea. I was glad I got to see that. Not far from the Jordan River. I don't know about seeing that. I mean, it's always nice to say, well, I saw the Jordan, but I'd never get baptized in it. 
It might have been better when Jesus got baptized. But it didn't look good and healthy when, when I was there. Kind of money. Now I know why the, the one guy said, isn't there better waters? <laughs> look bad. But uh, yet it is located near the Jordan, not far from the Jordan River. But yet in a rather desolate region of Israel. They, they need where they're, it's speaking of here. They needed a source of water which they call sweet water or drinkable water, potable water, in order to survive, in order to, for there to be prosperity. And only the God, through the, the prophet, could affect and do such a notable miracle that was done here. Now, you're not going to find, not even in Hebrew writing, are you going to find where God told Elisha, go down there and heal the waters. That amazes me, to a degree, because there's scriptures inside the Word of God where God doesn't say anything, but yet a prophet will speak. And God will honor the word of a prophet. Makes me wonder sometimes, not the self-acclaimed, not the self-called prophets, but I wonder where are the prophets today of God? We, we testify, or you hear say, well, all the prophets, there's prophets that's out there, there's apostles out there. But I'm talking about prophets that can make a notable change or or God worked through their life where you see a notable change with inside of an individual or congregation or a, or a city or a nation. And not, you got to look at Elisha here. That Elisha, the, the Bible says that he did this miracle. And in doing this miracle, the scripture plainly states that the waters were healed unto this day. I'm not talking about the, all the ones and the TV evangelists and the empty wheelchairs that you see that a lot of them paid people to ride in on. I'm not talking about the fakery, the fake stuff. I'm talking about the real stuff that really happens and 10 years from now it is still the miracle is still done. I'm talking about a life that has been changed. I'm talking about a life that's been changed under the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And 10 years from now that life is still changed. I'm not talking about not wavering. We all waver sometimes. We all stumble. But I'm talking about in the long run, when you, God fills you with the Holy Ghost, that power is good for today, tomorrow, 10 years, 100 years from now. And that, that Spirit of God is still keeping you. I'm tired of the fakery and the ones that said, well, you know, it just didn't do nothing for me. So I turn around, they come in, they get filled with God. How do you get filled with the power of God 
and go right back out that quick and fall and commit your sin. Then you're telling me you're serving a weak God. Y'all hear what I'm saying? The God I serve is not weak. The God I serve, I'm here to tell you, is an almighty God. He's Jehovah, El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh. You can name all the Ishkanu. You can name all the ones. Jehovah Rophai, Jehovah Rophai. He's the God. He said, I'm the God that healeth you. Now, either God is truth, or he's a liar. My God is not a liar. He said, if you will keep my commandments and keep my statues, if you will obey me and honor me, I will put none of these diseases on you. Now either it's truth or it's a lie. And I am here to tell you, it's truth. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Not some fake worked up thing. Is that the God you serve? I don't try to make myself better. I need to be better. I need to be a better pastor. I need to be a better preacher. I need to be a better soul winner. But I'm here to tell you, the only one that can make you better is God. If you will serve Him and allow Him to do it. God will not go beyond the region of your choice. Getting off a little bit here. The men of the city said to Elisha, Behold, now, you know something, let me, let me say something here. If you read the previous chapters, chapter, Elisha is following Elijah, right? And he's not letting him go. Elisha knew what he wanted. And he was a man that was going after it. You know what I like about Elisha? He was, he was raised up. I guess mom and daddy had a little bit of money. Had a pretty good sized farm. Had oxen, all that. I'm sure Elisha heard about Elijah. I'm sure. And here, here is Elijah walking by, and he sees Elisha. Out with this team of oxen. 
And he just walks by and throws his mantle. It's like a boomerang. It was going to come back on him. But Elisha turned around. There were some words that were said. You know what I like about Elisha? He didn't run in and tell mommy and daddy, is it okay if I offer up the oxen? Is it okay if I offer them up? And he turned around and he, mom and dad's oxen, he kills them, slaughters them, and is going to make a feast, takes the plows and puts them in a pile and burns them. What he was saying was, there is not going to be anything that's going to take and entice me to come back. And the problem is, we get in the church, but we don't burn and get rid of the things that will entice us. Feel the Holy Ghost in this. Because I'm tired of the ones that do come in and they get a little bit of... <laughs> you can't interpret that one with your fingers. <laughs> and then they turn around, never been in the church, and they say, man, the church is dead. You didn't even have the Raul Kakodesh breathing you long enough. But I thank you, Mr. Devil, for your insight into this thing. But they go right back out like the lady that was healed a fourth stage cancer. And they get what they want. And the Bible says, I'm gonna, I'll do that. I'll give you the desire of your heart. I'm going to do this to prove you just to see if you're going to serve me. And then as soon as they get healed, they get a clean report. They're right back out there with their skirts up to here, doing everything they want to do. <laughs> Jesus. That's the only thing I can say. Jesus. Well, it's going to take a little while to fit in the holiness. Not if you get holiness on the inside. And God said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Right. Oh, he is. <laughs> I just don't know what to do with it. I feel it running up and down my spine. But see... Understand that there was a curse that you read in your Bible found in Joshua chapter 6. Chapter number six. I'm not going to try to tie all this in. Chapter number, chapter number 6, verse number 26, concerning Jericho. Oh, I'm in, I'm sorry, I'm in Judges. Not, it's, it's, in, it's in Joshua. I was getting ready to read. Boy, the devil don't like this message. 
Yeah, but that's a little too small for my headlights. The Bible says, and Joshua adjured them at that time. Now, now look. He said, curse. Cursed be the man before Jehovah that raiseth up the building that buildeth this city Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua and his fame was noised abroad. Now, now again, Joshua, God didn't tell Joshua. Well, may, maybe we need to bring back that freedom within the pulpit. Bring back that freedom that where the man of God is not afraid to say something. Joshua said, this is the way it's going to be. Anybody that raises up this city again, let them be a curse. And then he, he goes on to describe how it's going to be done. Amen. Which was still in effect, even though it had been fulfilled in the days of King Ahab. When he, he had a Bethel had rebuilt the city at the cost of his two sons in 1 Kings chapter number 16 and verse 34. It happened exactly the way it said. And let me tell you something. That curse is still there. It didn't change. Oh, there's a place called Jericho. But it didn't change. Understand what I'm saying. And, and these men of this city, since you got a little bit of insight here. Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city. The men are telling him, Elisha. It is pleasant as my Lord seeth. Look around. But the water is not and the ground is barren. The word pleasant, again, we look at it if we look up in good old Webster's. Well, it's nice. It's, it's really beautiful, you know, and usually a place like that with the palm trees or whatever has the oasis. It's not what it's saying. What the men were saying when you read it from the Hebraic standpoint, he said the situation of the city is pleasant or it's very deceiving. It's very misleading. In other words, it's, it looks like a pretty decent place. How many has ever heard the expression, don't let looks deceive you? And what these... Elderly or men of the gate, these men that was of counsel, was basically telling Elisha, this is pleasant, yeah, it's, mm, but don't let it deceive you. Don't let it mislead you. And that happens a lot within the church. I'm not talking about the world. Oh, you can be misled and deceived by the world. There's people that take up your time and eat up all your time, eat up everything, don't really 
want God, don't really care about it, but they'll take your time, and it seems like, well, you know, hey, they're... But sometimes those kind of people are sent not by God. You've heard it in the teachings before. So he... Here's Elisha saying, as my Lord seeth, but the water, the water is not. Now, if it just was stayed there, it would be all right. But not. When you trace it down to the geographic, to the, the time, to where it's at, to what is happening here, what's going on, it says that the waters was exceedingly parasitic. Bacteria, germs just was so high in the water. To drink it, it was deadly. Scripture said that it would bring death. Extremely. But it goes on to, to state that the water, which is not, is, is very... Uh, wicked it uses the word wicked very deadly it's very bad uh, it's not it's, it's not pleasant it's, you can look at it it's deceiving the place is deceiving but the waters are wicked the waters now, so what they were saying, because of the root word that is used there, because the root word is the word rash, and it's the word ayin. And I looked at that, and I thought, well, wait a second. Rash is talking about the head. The chief, the most important, the highest, that's the, that's the resh, the, the, letter, the letter resh. Ayin is speaking about the appearance, wasted. And I realized, wait a second. Water always represents in the Bible what? What does it represent? Jesus, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God, right? The Bible says that out of your bellies, remember we read the scripture, shall flow rivers of living water. So water is always representing the Spirit of God. Then I realized, wait a second. What they're saying, these waters are not only highly parasitic, which could be symbolic of the demonic realm or the demonic world because they're very wicked, they're very bad. And in these waters, there is no king. There is no appearance of a king. There's no appearance of the chief. These waters are deceiving. They look all right, but it's not the place of a king. Because these waters... Being parasitic, they're very evil, they're very bad. 
very wicked. They're without importance. Their appearance is not only wasted, but it's a death. Remember, the Bible said that the devil will come as an angel of light. And it will look good, the appearance, but there's something wicked about this. This light. It's not the same. There's something about these waters. It's not the same. These waters are supposed to produce prosperity. They're supposed to produce a lot of different things, you know, growth. But these waters are not. And the ground is barren. The Hebraic for that word barren I'll see if I can say this, disconsolate. I don't know how you say it in Spanish. Disconsolado. What does it mean? Barren. There's no joy. The ground is barren, no joy. It means cheerless. There's no cheer, there's no happiness, there's no joy. It's dejected. It's empty. This land, it's downcast. It's depressed and depressing. What the Jews were saying here that we can't produce anything because the water is bad, the water is wicked, it is water, highly parasitic, impossible to grow anything, there's no fruit that the land will bear or produce because the water's no good. And what we try to grow, it's not good to eat because of the parasitic, the, 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 the things that the water produce is now in, in the grass and, and in the, the food that we try. And it's, you don't understand, it's just not any good. It's, it's just bad. In Elisha. And that's, that's what the Lord was speaking. And the, av the adversaries giving his little plan away. He said, listen. I have to do something to get my people where they need to be within my purpose and within my plan. My plan and my purpose is not to just bless them, cause them to prosper. Yes, that will happen when they are fulfilling my plan and my purpose. And my plan, but they're becoming lethargic, uh, lazy, comfortable, kind of like I've got it, now you can get it but I don't want to do anything to help you get it because I got it, now you're going to have to get it. 
Do you get it? And see, that's not my plan. My plan is found where they went house to house breaking bread. My plan is where they went out into the streets and the highways and they were preaching this message to everybody. To the halt, the blind, the lame. Oh, there were some that said, hey, I got to go prove my wife. <laughs> I don't know how you prove her. And I got to go prove my cattle. I got to go check out some land that I bought. If you didn't check out the land before you bought it, you're a dummy. And if you didn't check her out before you married her, you're a bigger dummy. Or vice versa. And the only way you can hope to make out on that deal is you better find them in the church. It's not getting a big rousing approval here, God. Amen. It's the only safe thing. So Elisha, he said, here's the starting, and this is what will bring revival. How many wants to know what's going to bring revival? That's not a big arousing approval either of this message. How many wants to know, how many wants to experience and be a part of revival? How many want to live in that revival atmosphere? How many wants to feel the power and the presence of God come down? How many wants to be used of God? Not just the preacher or the pastor's wife, but everybody can be used of God, be used in the gifts of the Spirit. How many wants that? This is what God spoke to me. He said, here's what it's going to take. An individual, now, this is for, everybody say, this is for me. See, if you don't want revival, it, it, it can't stop me from not having a revival. And I can't stop you from having a revival. You can have revival if nobody else wants to have it. But here's the way you have revival. Elisha said, bring me a new cruise. If you'll just bring me a new soul, bring me a new vessel, I'm not talking about all the ones that came in and left and come in and left and keeps begging and crying to blood. I'm talking about you need to get out and bring me a new cruise. Somebody that never had it. Somebody that was never filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm not saying don't pray for the backsliders. I'm not saying don't reach for the backsliders. But God's saying, I want a new cruise. Can you shout, yeah. In other words, I want you to get out there, find somebody that don't know about me, that never had me, never had my spirit in them, never spoke another tongue. Find me a new cruise. Bring me a vessel. And not just a few. Bring me many of them. What do you got in your house? That's what the prophet said. Some people would say, well, I don't know what I got in my house. I don't got nothing in my house. That's right. Well, I got tongues. Tongues will send you to hell. If you're not doing what God is wanting you to do. Because tongues will make you feel like you're safe. Tongues will make you feel like I, I still got it and I'm going to make it. 
tongues is not the gauge. The fruit is the gauge. <clears throat> That's the gauge. It looks good. But the water is parasitic. The water is evil. The water is no good. The water don't do nothing. It can't grow nothing. The ground is barren. There is no fruit. God said, tell my people that I want fruit. And the way I'm going to heal the waters, the way I'm going to heal the land, if they bring me a new cruise, you want healing. You want healing in your body. You want prosperity in your home. But you won't reach out and bring me a cruise. You're so stingy with what you got or what you think you got. And nothing is good until you give it away. I've got the Holy Ghost, but I gotta give it to somebody. I gotta tell somebody about it. I gotta pray for somebody. Somebody needs a healing. I'm looking for a new cruise. I'm looking for somebody, Sister Gigi, that'll say, Here I am, and feel the presence and the power of God on them. You want a healing, you want prosperity, but you're too stingy. You sit around and you do nothing. You can complain about all these things. And God doesn't move because you have a need. God moves because you have faith. Well, I need a healing. Well, do something about it. Bring a new cruise. We told people, we'll pick you, we'll pick you up in the van. God bless us with a van. We'll pick you up in the van. As soon as you say, I'll pick you up in the van... Guess what? They got all kinds of other problems for why they can't be in church. Well, if I go to church, I'm going to get that chrono or whatever it is virus. Not if the power of the blood is on you. Not if you kept his statues and his commandments. Send me a letter, close down your church. No way, this ain't my church, it's God's church. And I never seen God say, I'm going to put a sign on the door, don't you show up until the chrono's gone. God don't close his church. God, I don't want to say that one. I really don't. Why not? I'm already deep anyway. Did you hear the news? Post the snow tonight. Let's call the pastor and see if there's church tomorrow. But when we were going to church... We went to church when it was two and three foot deep. That night or early in the morning, God is my witness. Tell me if I'm lying. We get out there early in the morning 
and start shoveling our driveway. Why? Because we've got to get to church. <laughs> Man, Sister Carr can't do that. You know, she lived by herself. She, she, she can't get out. Well, hey, let's go over and do it so she can go to church. Am I telling the truth? Oh, wait a second, man. We got to get to church. We got to get there. Church, let me see. Church starts, not like church back then started early. Church starts at 11 o'clock. We got to get there about 8 o'clock because we got to shovel the driveway. We got to shovel the parking lot. What? How about if I give $25 to to run a snow plow. I'm telling the truth. We want the healing and we want the prosperity. But we don't want all the responsibility and accountability for getting out there and doing it. We want, hey, God, money in my pocket. I told God, you know what, it's just truth. And I thank God, man, I'm looking good, ain't I? Yeah. I mean, I got suspenders on holding this up. <laughs> I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to tell you this, there wasn't was nobody here. Everybody said there was nobody in the church. And I had to come in, and I'm carrying all this stuff every morning. Well, not every morning, but every Sunday morning, and sometimes in, and I'm, I'm walking down that aisle, and all of a sudden my pants falls. I'm telling the truth. I said, God is a blessing to lose weight. You got, you got to give me some. You got to give me something. He didn't tell me this, but it came to my mind got suspenders boy now I take all this stuff find a pew and I set everything down on it and pick up my drawers and put them up and I'm, now I'm picking up this stuff and I'm holding my pants and I said God I, I got this feeling listen to me brother Hiram I got this feeling that God you want me to lose more weight that's why there's nothing on the shelves in the store. If you're going to do that, then let my grass turn green so I can get out there and chomp on some grass then. Give me something. But see, we, we don't understand. God said there's things that happen that I allow to happen because I've got to get your attention. Well, when you're about halfway down the aisle and your drawers are on the floor, you got my attention, God. It's like telling God, don't peek. Am I messing this up, God? But here, this land, what the Jews were saying in the Hebraic, because the water's bad, this land is barren. It brings us no joy. It brings us no cheer. It brings us no happiness. There's nothing we can do. The land is barren. That's why they chose the word. And, and, and this is a place. This is a place. This is evil. This is, not, this is not of Jehovah. This is evil. This is wicked. This water is not the same water. Amen. And he said, bring me a new cruise. And he said, put some salt in it. Salt.
brings healing. Salt is a preservative. Salt will kill the parasitic, the germs and the bacteria. The salt will get rid of the salt will get rid of the evil and the wickedness because ye are the salt of the earth. And where my salt is at, and it doesn't lose its savor, but where my salt is at, I will cause prosperity and healing. But it's got to be put in a new cruise. Because some of you old ones need to see the joy and the power and the fruit with inside of a new vessel when they're eager and they're excited and they're excited about reaching out to the lost. Shout yeah! Somebody ought to be praising God in this place. God wants a revival church. God wants a church that's reaching. Amen. Two things needed to bring about a revival, to bring about a healing. Two things needed. Get me a new cruise. Put some salt in it. Get me a new cruise. Put salt in it. This would bring healing to the water. But it would also bring healing to the land. And the barren land will now begin to produce fruit. The new land, you'll look out because the water is not the water like Satan comes as an angel of light. No, no. This water is healed. This water is good. This water is pure. This water is drinkable. This water is good stuff. This water will, will now take and irrigate the land. The washing of the word. The, word, the water will flood your soul. The water will bring forth the fruit that you need in order to survive. Three places and three cases of healing of the water. The book of Exodus chapter 15. The waters of Mara. The waters was bitter. And Moses said, bring me, bring me a tree. And they brought a tree. And they throw it into the water. And the waters that were bitter became sweet. And that water represents the body of Jesus Christ. You'll get nowhere if your water is bitter. You got bitterness in you? You got hatred in you? You got malice inside you? You need the tree. <laughs> you need Jesus in your life. You need to get rid of that bitterness. Because I guarantee you, there be no healing with inside your body. There be no healing with inside the land. There be no fruit that will bear, you will bear fruit when you got bitterness inside your heart.
this one, this one guy, I'll just use that terminology, this one guy said, well, we're producing. We're baptizing people all the time. It's easy to baptize somebody all the time. Let me change my st the, the standards of God, not me, the standards of God. Let me change them. If I change all the standards with the teaching that we give out at this church, of course we're going to lose the anointing. When we lose anointing, then we got to get up here and shake the pulpit a little bit, make it look like we got the anointing. Change the standards, I'll fill this place up. I not only fill this place up, I'll fill, I'll fill over there at the high school, I'll fill the stadium up. Because people, people are willing to come, get filled with the power of God. They're willing to come. I just don't want to, I don't, don't want the accountability of changing anything. If I don't have to change anything, I'll come. Oh, I want to hear the preach. Oh, that's fabulous stuff. Man, those revelations, that's great. I've never heard that before. I'll come, but not if I've got to change standards. So don't tell me how many people you're baptizing when your wife looks like a hoe out on the street. That's strong, ain't it? It's God. But I thought you wanted to get into heaven. I thought you wanted to make it into the kingdom of God. You already knew what I preached. You already knew what I stood for. Before you ever came through the door, you knew I was going to preach it exactly the way God said to preach it. So you can listen to me on the internet and say, well, I ain't going to that church. That's not up to me. That's up to you and the God. But if you want to be saved, you'll want truth. Voila. Eat them out. Got another message. I'm going to lose it, I know. Because this, this is what Isaiah said. And ye shall draw Water. Everybody said water. water. From the wells of Yeshua. Because that's what salvation means right there. Salvation means Yeshua. Ask any good Jew to interpret, interpret it to you. They will interpret the word salvation, Yeshua. There is only joy that you can draw from the wells of Yeshua. If you're serving God and you got God with inside your heart, you can draw joy. Your land will produce joy. Not cheerlessness, not dejection, not depression, not where you're downcast or anxiety. But if you're serving God and you got Yeshua or God in you, you can dump your bucket in the well and bring up a bucket of joy. Whether you're on the mountain or whether you're in the valley. Same God. Good times, bad times, same God. In the hospital, out of the hospital, it don't matter. Same God. Same God. With joy shall you draw waters. Matter of fact, I will. I'll go back, God. told me to read this. Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the 
wells of salvation. Not just well, but wells. You, you, you think, well, he don't have no problems. I got problems. Brother Bernard's got problems. Everybody serving God's got some kind of problem. Because it's the devil's business and it's written with inside the book. Everybody say it's in the book. It's right here in the book. And it says in the book that every time they would dig a well, the enemy would come along and stop it up. Every time, every time they dig that well, the enemy would come along and stop it up. Book of Numbers. And what did God say? He said, tell my people, Tell them to come here. And he said, this is what God told him now. He said, tell them to sing to the well. Look it up. Tell them, sing to the well. What do you want me to sing, God? We will, we will rock them. I got to give a little. Huh? What do you want me to sing? Sing spring up. Oh, well, spring up. Spring up. That's, that's you know, it doesn't take a genius to... To memorize them words. It was easy enough for me. So I get in there. And I. Spring up. Oh well. Spring up. And I begin to sing. Spring up. Catchy tune ain't it? Oh well. Spring up. But it's the next verse after that. It said, and the people got their shovels and they began to dig the well. Oh, I thought I just had to sing a song. Yeah. Here's, here's a good one for her. Faith without works. You can sing all day long and, and die of thirst. God said spring up as you dig. You know what that means? It means you've got to do some digging. And while you're digging, you know the enemy is there filling it back up. And you're just digging. Spring up. Oh, well, spring up. Spring up. Can somebody help me with this? Spring up. Uh, but get a shovel, too. Spring up. Oh, well. Because with joy shall you draw water from a well that's been dug out or digged out. And every time you have to understand the enemy is there to try to stop your will. With problems, situations, circumstances, corona, whatever it is, he's there to, you know, you got to be a dummy. I'm not talking about people. You got to be a dummy. To figure out that the people in the church should be smarter, the Bible says, 
more wiser than the enemy, right? And soon as the letter starts going out to start closing the church and stop dealing with people, you got to see the enemy close the church. Don't reach for people. This can't be God. It just can't be God. I feel like Sanford and son, you dummy. But thank you. You allowed me to see something here. But how many wants a healing? How many wants a revival? So we know that you got to get a cruise. Everybody say new cruise. New cruise. And with that cruise, the Bible says, you got to put salt in it. What's that mean? You might have to give a home Bible study. It means that you might have to do something, but you have to put the salt. But only God fills with the Holy Ghost. Ah, yeah. But the Word of God is what you place. Some, some plant, some water, but only God gives the increase. You may have to witness to them. You may have to pick them up. You may have to give them a home Bible study. You might have to take and do something to get that salt on the inside. But when you bring that new cruise in, God says there's going to be healing in your land. Shall yeah. You said there was three. Well, there was Mara. Got to get rid of bitterness. But you don't know what they said to me. Who cares? You can't live, you can't live above, you know, when, when we were a kid. You don't, I don't hear it no more. Sister Sinner, Brother Sinner, I, I, I don't hear it no more. Sister Carr, you used to say it when we were kids. Sticks and stones may, but names, they ain't going to hurt me. But we'll get upset over something stupid. And you know all we got to do? Stop gossiping. Like how I slid that one in there? So we talked about Mara. We talked about bitterness. We talked about the waters of Jericho. But then there's one other one. <laughs> It'd take too long to read this entire chapter. So I'm just going to give you bits and pieces. Afterward, he brought me again to the door of the house. Everybody say house. house. Mm -hmm. And behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood towards the east, and the waters came down from under and from the right side of the house. From the right side of the house. From the right side. Got to hit the needle. Of the house. And at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward. And he led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand Went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters, and the waters were to my uncles, ankles. And again, 
he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters and the waters were to my knees. And he measured a thousand and he brought me through the waters. Everybody say he brought me through the waters. After he measured a a thousand and it was a river that could not pass over. For the waters were risen. Waters to swim in. A river that could not be passed over. Where's the musicians? And he said unto me, son of man, son of man, in the Hebrew, you frail, you're just a frail person. Not very strong. Not very. Paul said, when I am weak, then I'm, am I strong? You're just a, you know, frail. He said unto me, son of man, hast thou seen this? And he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now when I had returned, behold, the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other side. Trees, this is a... Um, a twofold meaning here. Okay? Trees always represents people. It could represent people. In the book of Matthew, it could represent nations. But I looked out, and there was trees. Something's happening with this water. And it's flowing. That's what it's saying. It's flowing. Then he said unto me, These waters issue out towards the east country and go down into the desert. It's going down into places where it is dry, where it is barren, where there is no fruit. That's what's happening. Which being brought forth into the sea and the waters shall be healed. It shall come to pass everything that liveth which moveth whithersoever the rivers shall come shall live. And out of your belly shall flow. And wherever them rivers flow, there is going to be life. Wherever the rivers reach out and flow, I will bring healing. And there shall be a great multitude of fish because... These waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything shall live whither or wherever the river cometh. By the river, upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaves shall not fade, Neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth fruit, new fruit, according to his months, because their waters, they issue out of where? The sanctuary. And the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. There's something about the water when it flows from the sanctuary. When it flows and that river flows on out and begins to touch lives. Elisha said, bring me a new cruise. And you put salt into it. And when you put salt into it, the word will be spoken. And when the word is spoken, there will be no more death in the water. That individual that is parasitic, that individual that has evil within their life where 
may have bad things going on within their life. He said, when you bring me that cruise and you put salt in it, there'll be no more death. For I will bring life. But I like what Elisha said. And those waters was healed unto this day. Let's stand. There's a song we sang. I haven't heard it for a long time. There is a river. Listen. That flows from deep within. There is a fountain and it frees the soul from sin. Come to these waters. There is a vast supply for there is a river that never shall run dry how many wants that river flowing there come on let's gather around is a river that flows from deep within. And there is a fountain. Listen. And it frees. It frees the soul. My soul from sin. Jesus said, Well, come, oh, come to these waters. Water. Oh, there, there is a vast, vast supply. Bring that new cruise. Oh, and there. getting weak we're now there you've you felt desolate you felt like nobody cared but see God's telling you today to dig your well tell that well spring up a well spring up dig it there is a fountain and it frees that free it frees my soul my soul I need a healing on the inside I gotta find me a cruise I gotta get me some salt come to Jesus said hey everybody that thirst come to these waters there's a vast supply. There There's a vast, a vast supply. supply. And there Jesus. is no, right a now. river well, it never, never, it never, it never never shall run dry oh hallelujah right now in the name of Jesus Christ 
God, I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, deliver, Lord. Heal the body, Lord. Set free, Almighty God. As he lifts his hands, he begins to dig that well. Bring healing. Bring healing, Lord. He don't know Come on. It never, never shall. Come to these waters. Now come, there come, come on, lift your hands to God. I want revival within me, Lord. Lord, I want to be a soul winner, Lord. I'm going to bring that.